He's got every single skill you'd want. He <laughs> knew he was going to get you out. Oh, this is a confidence. Uh, we were in Mumbai and I said, why don't you come home for a meal? What would you like? Do you like uh, Indian food? He said, oh, I love it. Uh, I think there I anything this specific, story. spicy, less I spicy. This story. Or, uh, it should be like that, authentic Indian style. Took a bite of the chicken to start with. I nearly blew my head off. <laughs> so while I was... One thing I noticed that Shane kept nudging my manager all the time. So whenever I just sort of was cutting it up and moving it to the side. <laughs> Shane hasn't eaten anything. I said, what about his plate? His plate looks half empty. And that is because why Shane is putting everything on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I realized that Shane cannot handle spicy food. But I had too much respect for him. He didn't want to hurt me, but he kept nudging my manager. Said, mashed potatoes, those kind of things. And he ended up eating that at my place. But. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. He took the game by the scruff of the neck. He was either chatting to the umpire, he was chatting to the batsman. See, Warney was a psychologist as well as a leg spinner. Yeah. Nothing would ever happen until I let go of the ball. So I would always try and play at my pace. Down the wicket, he's gone for it, he it. It was like I was doing something when I was doing nothing. I might look around at the sites where if the umpire says, come on, hurry up, I'd look around and pretend. <laughs> so I like to create that drama out on the field. What about to McCullum? Sure. He said it. Like the, it worked, I suppose, the more I would exaggerate it. And the emotion that starts to contaminate what you're thinking. Shane Warne with the flipper, and he's got a wicket here. And that's literally, literally that's one of the reasons why I absolutely loved cricket growing up. It was because of Shane Warne. He used to do that. He used to quite literally play the mental game with every single opponent. And it was, it, it, he knew that, okay, I'm setting you up now. And what was similar to what he was just saying, I'm setting you up now for either the next time, the next time I'm bowling against you, the next over, I'm going to be bowling against you. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to bowl it this way for this whole over, but then I'm going to throw something in the next one. Ability to intimidate people, his yep. ability to entice people into doing things, yep. put source in a lot of ways. He's bowling around the leg. You see how far out he went then? best bowling in test cricket. See how far out he went then? He went so far out to throw the batter off. Yeah, this is the... the oh. I felt the opposition were worried about what I could do. <laughs> I'm going to get you out this ball, OK? This ball is going to get you out. Oh, you are weak. Out of nothing, he's created a <laughs> scenario <laughs> where... You were worried about him and not the ball. You were playing the man, not the ball. I never saw a player that he thought he couldn't get out. Example, Thanks for that, Michael Clark. <laughs> they were playing India <laughs> at the <laughs> Adelaide Oval, <laughs> and Shane had come round the wicket bowling to Ganguly. In, 40 bloody minutes in, I haven't seen Michael Clark at all, and it's just like, freaking 10 words <laughs> he just said. I was like, all right. Thanks for that, mate. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers, Jeff. And Shane bowled three or four wide into the footmarks. He said, they haven't come here to see you kicking the ball. They've come here to see this bloke playing shots. <laughs> and about <laughs> another... Ganguly ran down the track, tried to hit him out of the ground. And got stumped. And got stumped. Ah! You know, I probably pushed it a bit too far sometimes. And in the heat of the moment, over, you know, 23, 24 years... I and I paid the penalties for that. Yep. And the explosion of that personality was too much for many an opponent. That it captured the attention of people who weren't even that keen on the game. Mm. Like everyone wanted to be Shane Warne. Shane Warne. Shane Warne. I got my <laughs> Hi, I'm Shane Warne. Maybe you've seen me around. And people wanted to know a bit more about him. Your daughter could bring anyone home on Valentine's Day. Who would it be? Shane Warne won the poll. <laughs> Back page, middle page, and everything was good. He's got up to some good stuff. He's got up to some stuff that the media love. Like, he was he was an everyday bloke who happened to be amazing at bowling. I didn't realise Ed Sheeran was friends of him. All right, OK, fair enough. That's why he's in. At half time, would have a pint and a cigarette and then go back on and win yeah, the World Cup. That was, well, yeah, that was just... And I couldn't quite work out how he trod that line. 
Oh, that He's is Chris TV. Martin. I was the face of Nike and got paid big bucks for four years. I got a huge contract and meet Michael Jordan. It's the air flipper, the greatest shoe in the world. Michael Jordan was the face of Nike and that, that became the hall of legends. It fostered a certain sense of pride in our sporting performance. I've been keeping it together, guys. I've been keeping it together a lot. But in this English summer, the romance has blossomed. I don't know, I just liked him. He was just a really genuine kind of person. I didn't really have a clue, like, you know, what he did. Dennis Lilly and Rod Marsh and, you know, those guys were playing. It wasn't crazy to both of us. It was exciting. It was good fun. We were very, very young. You know, we were happy, we were in love. There was no drama and we got along great. We got along really well. Shane's wife, Simone, gave birth to a baby girl in Melbourne last night. The Warns have called their new daughter, Brooke. As soon as the test match finished in 97, I flew home and was like, oh my God. Wow. And then Jackson 99, and then summer 2001. I was 100% at home with the kids. Hello. Say hello. Being away for nine months on the road, rightly or wrongly, cricket was always my number one priority. And it doesn't mean I didn't value my family, but they were second. My life changed when the kids came along. <laughs> Not ready? <laughs> <laughs> Took him overseas and nothing can change that. That was just it for his cricket. And it was kind of just like a proud moment. You're away from home in soulless hotel rooms in different parts of the world. Those hotel rooms can be very hard and lonely places to be. You have to make sacrifices to be an international sportsman. I can't shy away that I put my family second to try and be the best I possibly could for Australia and be the best player I could. So, and I was always present with my family when I was with them. As good as I was, I had to be selfish at times. And most of the time I was. And unfortunately they said that it's the ones that you love most, that you hurt the most. Mm. <laughs> and that is true. That is very much true. And at least Jay Warren was being honest. At least Shane Warne was being honest. A lot of people lie about being there for their for their kids. A lot of people lie about that. He was honest about it. It's like Peterson said. Generally, it's the ones we love most that we hurt the most. I can appreciate those sacrifices he made when we were younger for him to be Shane Warren, who he is today. We only ever saw him as dad. He's probably one of the most headstrong people that I know. He's like, who are you to tell me what to do? Whatever he did, he wanted to be the best dad. <laughs> he was everything to us, I suppose. The attention with a little human being. Fairly clearly in his cricket career, be the one with the power. Oh, <laughs> oh there's never a skill. But I was just a big brother. You know, you boss your little brother around. Got his fists like this and he said, that's it. And went bang <laughs> and hit me in the face. Yep. No more bossing me around. He's a win at all costs type of guy. Get in there, baby! Oh, got yeah. it. I get this phone call in the room, pick up the phone and it's Sally Malik on the phone. So I knock on the door, Sally Malik answers the door. I sit down. Yep. I think we should win tomorrow though. <laughs> I wanted to get in there straight away that we, we're going to win. Oh, no. I said, well, I think you can. You don't understand what happens if we lose in Pakistan. Our houses will get burnt down. And he goes, no, you don't understand what I'm asking you. Oh, I can have goodness. in your room 200,000 US dollars cash. Don't try and get us out. We'll let the ball go. The match will be a draw. So I'm like, blown. I'm like, I don't really know what to say. Yeah, you would be. And then I go, well, let's go and tell Mark Taylor. Now, remember, this is Mark Taylor's first test match as captain. It's on. And now myself and Tim are even more determined to win. Gets down to three or four, th uh, three runs to win. Stays low, goes through Ian Healy's uh, four buys. They win the test. Oh. They win the test. 
And I you're can't like, believe it. And we're all pretty shattered that we lost the test, but. You could so have had 200,000. I'm walking back and I'm looking at the Pakistan group and Sally Malik's just sort of sitting there. There's court cases and all sorts of things and Sally Malik gets banned for life. <laughs> Captain of the opposition try and bribe you to bowl poorly and wide of off stump. I mean, it's a lot of money to say no to, um, but, you know, I did.